Hi, and welcome back to this episode 18 of my modification and CNCing of this Sieg 7x12 mini lathe. I think I got a little bit behind on the leaderboard here. Last week I fabricated the stand for the lathe and this week I'm going to fit it out with its cabinets and hopefully get started painting it. I got really lucky with the electrical cabinets. There was some guy selling these uh, cabinets. I think he had a hundred of them. And he was selling them in our local Craigslist kind of thing. It's called Wilhaben here in Austria. For only uh, 20 bucks each plus five bucks for the postage. So I was pretty happy about that. In fact, I bought three of them. Although I'm only using two for this job. Now, of course, they're supposed to open sideways, but they fit better for me uh, with the lid opening down like that. These are German, they're made by a company called Rittel. Beautifully made, quite thick steel, probably maybe a, a millimetre or so, powder coated, excellent quality. So, there'll be two of them mounted like this. I'll use a marker pen and a set of transfer punches to mark out the holes I need to drill. Okay, so that's the electrical cabinet side. Now on this side, I want a set of drawers. Obviously, I'd love to have some sort of high quality, expensive industrial drawers like Lister or something, but you know, realistically, I'm not gonna spend hundreds of euro for, a, for drawers on a cabinet of a lathe that in itself only costs 400 bucks, or, or used back then cost 400 bucks. What I'm gonna use is the same set of drawers that I use for my Klaxon accessories. And the funny thing is, it's Ikea. Ikea has these super cheap, like $30 uh, steel drawers. They're nothing that special, but for things as small and light as the mini lathes accessories, um, they'll work fine. So as you can see, the model is a Helmer, Helmer. They look like this. It's just a little filing cabinet made out of pretty darn thin sheet, sheet, sheet metal. Now, the trick is everything just gets folded up and clipped together with these little tabs, which is obviously not a terribly secure way of fastening things, which are then gonna have um, tools in them. So my trick is to epoxy everything together as I make it. So I don't just use their tabs, I get tabs plus epoxy. Seemed to work last time. All right, let's get started on this.
Welding, like data storage, is not one of my key competencies. So if I get a weld that looks this nice, generally it means something's wrong. Remember when you were a kid and there was that game and you couldn't work out why you couldn't fit the uh, round peg through the square hole? Yeah, I guess I wasn't very good at that game. That's this weld here on the rear lower bar. Now, I sized this gap here so that my cabinet would fit. Yeah, but it doesn't. So that's six five six millimeters and this one is uh, six yeah six five eight so three millimeters too tall so how on earth did that happen I used the same cabinet for all of the grinding accessories for the Clarkson and I've had that for a while now I measured to this edge here at 655 and I thought I'd added a couple of millimetres when I welded that up but obviously I slipped by a couple of millimetres and the other thing too is there's no base to these cabinets so I actually epoxied a, th a thick piece of plywood under this one so when I hooked onto the edge I think I'm not quite at the very lowest point that was stupid so there we have it. Looks like I'm going to have to cut this crossbeam back off and re-weld it on maybe another five millimeters further down. That's a shame. Well, when you consider how easy it was to chop that leg off, I'm gl glad I didn't go with my other half-baked idea, which would have been trying to grind down that section of the bar by two millimeters to try and fit it in anyway. But what I'll do now is I'll just put a little shim before I weld this tab back on to make sure I've got a little bit of clearance just to get this in and out. I cut those parts off, welded them back on. Now I can put, try this out. Okay, so that now fits. And are you fucking idiot? I welded the tab here on the wrong end, on the wrong leg. Oh, chop it off again.
I'm starting to prep everything for paint now. I don't really want to do a trial wiring and then have to rip all the wiring apart and redo it. So this way I'll paint everything first and then wire it up once and hopefully be finished. When I paint I won't be doing any filming because I really don't want any overspray killing my lenses or cameras so not the, nothing that interesting there anyway. I will be spray painting everything though. Right, heading for the paint shop. Here we are in the wood shop slash paint shop. The paint gun I'll be using is just this one. It's just some cheap import. Seems to work fine. So here's the stand and the various different parts with the undercoat drying. Well, the lathe is now completely disassembled and I'm just prepping it all for painting. I've done a layer of undercoat on the stand and the um, electrical cabinet and stuff like that already. But yeah, always a bit time consuming painting. I guess as always with painting, it's preparation that takes the longest. This is normally my wood shop, but it's been misused for painting at the moment. Probably not ideal for painting because there's quite a bit of dust around, but I gave it a good vacuum before I started. Once this, this is dried, I'll flip it over and then do all the top sides of everything. Here's all the drawers. I only painted the fronts of those. They came out quite nicely. The control panel has this heavy sort of orange peel texture to it from the powder coating. I kind of wanted the same texture over everything. This is the tool cabinet. I'm not sure how well the effect shows up here, but I did manage to get quite a similar uh, orange peel effect here. To get that sort of splattered orange peel effect, I turned the air right down and turned the paint right up, which makes it splatter. The only problem with this is it takes quite a long time then for the paint to cover everywhere. And by the time it's got full coverage, it's really quite a thick layer and then takes ages to dry. I was also not able to get the effect that consistent either. So some parts look more smooth and others have more of a more of that uh, orange peel effect. A nice byproduct of that orange peel effect is that it helps to cover up some of the defects like casting defects and maybe even some of the welding defects. Unfortunately, it'll take much thicker paint than this to cover up my sins with a welder. Luckily, this is the back. I first painted the uh, stand up, upside down, so all of the underside and now that I've flipped it over, the last painting to be done will be the top and the top side of the lower bars. Well, she's a bit windy today, but luckily nice and warm. So hopefully it all dries nice and quickly. The wind has blown a few bugs and stuff onto the onto the paint but hopefully it will have dried well enough beforehand that the bugs don't stick. I think now that the painting's finished is probably a good time to finish for this week and I'll edit and upload this video and I look forward to seeing you all next week. As always thanks a lot for watching if you like what you see please subscribe